No, these are the three shots fired, and this is this is the blast. It's late afternoon, and a crowd estimated at a few hundred is swarming around Benazir Bhutto's car. A clean-shaven man in sunglasses is watching at the fringes. He's concealing a gun. The man in white behind him is the suspected suicide bomber. The sniper moves in to within a few feet of Bhutto, who is greeting her supporters. He fires three shots. The last bang is that of the suicide bomber, blowing himself up. 21 people in all were fatally injured here. You can hear their cries of pain and shock. Look at the shooting again. As the gunman fires at Bhutto, her hair is lifted. Her shawl is also seen to rise, and she falls inside her car. These images, broadcast for the first time, apparently contradicting the official version of events, which insists that Benazir Bhutto was not shot. The government says she was killed after fracturing her head on her car's sunroof lever. But many here say both pictures and eyewitness testimony make a mockery of the government's story. I, I have seen that Benazir was gunshot by a gun. I am 100% sure that uh, Benazir was killed killed by a gun, gunshot. That opinion on the street seemingly borne out by the latest pictures of Thursday's atrocity. And as more such images come to light, they will fuel the anger of protesters both here at the scene of the crime and around the country who feel that they've been lied to by the government, that there's been a deliberate cover-up of what amounts to a massive security failure to protect this country's best-known politician. Budo is casting blame for her assassination on President Musharraf. Let's get to our exclusive report now on Budo's grim warning of what might happen to her and why. Her fears of an assassination have now come true. And only now can I reveal to you what I know. This is a story she wanted me to tell the world on her behalf if she were killed. This past October, Budo sent an email to her longtime friend in Washington, her U.S. spokesman, Mark Siegel. Addressing the danger she faced in her homeland, Budo wrote these words, and let me quote them precisely. Nothing will, God willing, happen. Just wanted you to know, if it does, in addition to the names in my letter to Musharraf of October 16th, I would hold Musharraf responsible. I have been made to feel insecure by his minions, and there is no way what is happening in terms of stopping me from taking private cars or using tinted windows or giving jammers or four police mobiles to cover all sides could happen without him. At Budo's request, Mark Siegel forwarded that email to me the day he received it back on October 26th, but he told me I could not report on it unless Budo was killed. In a moment, we'll get reaction from Pakistan's ambassador to the United States. Ambassador Durrani is standing by live. But let's get to the man who received that email from Benazir Bhutto, Mark Siegel, who sent it off to me. Mark, thanks very much uh, for coming in. I know you and Benazir Bhutto were close for 25 years. You had a long-standing relationship with her. My deepest condolences to you on the death of your friend. But give us the context uh, of this email that you received from her. This was two months ago. Um, well, uh, uh, Benazir was, uh, was very concerned by the lack of security that she had on, uh, on her arrival in Karachi on October 18th. Uh, the circumstances around the assassination attempt on the, ni the night of 18th, uh, the morning of the 19th, was very, very suspicious. Uh, there was no investigation, contrary to anything the ambassador might, might later say, there was no investigation uh, of that uh, horrendous killing which killed 179 people. Um, the, uh, there, she had asked that Scotland Yard and the FBI be, be brought in for uh, forensic uh, help 
uh, for the investigation. The government of General Musharraf absolutely refused to have Scotland Yard or the FBI brought in. Um, as we prepared for the campaign, um, um, former Prime Minister Budo was very concerned that she was not getting the security that she had asked for and that her husband had asked for. It was very, very specific. Um, that they had asked for uh, jammers to, uh, to, to, um, to set off IEDs. Uh, they, that was denied to be allowed in by the government of General Musharraf. She had asked for special vehicles. That was den uh, denied to her. Uh, she had asked for special tinted cars. She had asked for uh, four police vehicles to surround her at all times. She basically asked for all that was required for, for someone of the standing of a former prime minister. All of that was denied to her. She sent me the well, email. Let me, interrupt, she... let me interrupt for a moment, Mark, because I just want to be precise. This was two months ago, October 26th, that she sent you that email. Based on what you know, and I know you were in contact with her a lot over these two months, did she not get any of those uh, extra security precautions that she sought? She got some uh, police protection, but it was sporadic and erratic. She did not get the jammers that, that were necessary for the IEDs. She did not get the protection that she thought was necessary. Um, and she became increasingly concerned um, that this was not getting any better, but actually getting worse as she toured the country in preparation for the January uh, uh, 8th election, which she thought was uh, basically rigged from the top down and the bottom up but she was going to fight the fight because she was willing to sacrifice uh, everything for the cause of democracy in Pakistan and has been for most of her life. I don't she, know. Today she paid with her life. I don't know, Mark. I do believe Pakistan is under increasing threat of an extremist takeover and to save the country I believe we must restore democracy, get the people's faith in the country, moving the country forward. So I'm determined to go ahead with the mission to save Pakistan with democracy.